right, this is uh, the bleeding control and shock video. Um, when we have somebody that has an arterial bleed, it's very important that we control that bleeding as quickly as possible. Uh, a couple different ways we can do it. We always try to do the least invasive thing first, but if that fails, then uh, we need to control the bleeding with a tourniquet uh, before the patient loses too much blood. We know it's arterial because uh, it'll be spurting blood. Every time the patient's heartbeat, you'll see a spurt. So there'll be a spurt of blood coming out. Um, it'll be a brighter red color blood because it is uh, arterial. And uh, your patient's probably gonna look like crap. If they're losing a lot of blood, they're probably gonna look um, pale, diaphoretic. They're going into shock probably. They may or may not be conscious. Um, this is not a point though where we're going to check pulse for 10 seconds and check if they're breathing for 10 seconds. If we see spurting blood, we know they have a pulse because we can count the pulse with how many times it's spurting. So instead of checking the pulse and doing all that, wasting time, we need to address the bleed immediately. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're in full BSI. It's going to be a real bloody, messy scene. So we want to be uh, protected and want your partner protected. Um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to try to bandage the wound uh, without using a tourniquet. And there's a couple things we can use. We have sterile 4 by 4s that we can open up. And then we can put on his wound and then try to wrap it as tight as possible. We want to wrap it as tight as we can. And this may stop the bleeding. Um, if that stopped the bleeding, then great. If that did not stop the bleeding though, we need to now get more aggressive with it and we need to place a tourniquet. There's a few different things we can use for a tourniquet. Um, anything that can uh, capture and collapse the artery against the bone is what we're looking for. And usually the wider the better. Um, a lot of damage can happen if we use thin tourniquets. For instance, a shoelace, a wire, a rope. We want to stay away from those. Um, unless that is the absolute only thing we have, then please place one because we'd rather have um, nerve and muscle damage than a dead patient. But we try to use something uh, at least an inch and a half to two inches thick um, to really collapse that artery down. With Jared here, we have that he has a arterial wound on his lower arm. I've seen people try to put tourniquets on lower arms. Um, however, it just doesn't work that well because it's really hard to capture and collapse the artery because your artery will actually run in between those two bones in your uh, lower arm. So it's much more effective if we go up into the upper arm um, and collapse the brachial artery onto the humerus bone. So to do that, what, what we like to use, <clears throat> there are several different options. We use what's called a cap tourniquet. Um, but if you don't have one of these, uh, a triangle or bandage with a stick in it, twist the stick until the bleeding stops. I've seen people use blood pressure cuffs, which works quite well, pumped up to 150, 160, uh, maybe a little higher if they're hypertensive. Uh, that works as well. Uh, but we like to use what's called a cap tourniquet. Very simple to use. Um, basically, we slide this over his arm. Uh, pull this Velcro part through, the Velcro back on itself. Okay, once that's done, can you turn it on a little bit? We're gonna twist, this is called a windlass. We're gonna twist the windlass until Jared is not bleeding anymore. So we're not gonna do it too tight. But we're going to continue twisting until the bleeding stops. Once the bleeding has stopped, 
we know that we've now collapsed the artery against the bone. No blood's going through. Once that's done, we're going to um, secure the windlass, mark the time that the tourniquet was placed. And because he has had an arterial bleed for quite some time, like I said, he's probably gonna be uh, showing signs of shock, um, hypovolemic shock. He's gonna be hypotensive. He's gonna be pelical diaphoretic. We're gonna to wanna to lay him flat, elevate his feet, give him high flow oxygen, uh, be a non breather mask. Make sure that he um, maintains his body temperature, so we're gonna put a blanket over him, and we're gonna obviously give him nothing by mouth. And that's how we apply a tourniquet to an arm. It works the same way if it's a leg. Um, instead of using, uh, instead of trying to put a tourniquet on the lower leg, again, your bone dives between your tibia and fibula. We're gonna do it up on the uh, femur. You might have to use two on a thigh, to really get in there and collapse the uh, femoral artery against the, uh, your femur, but it will collapse down. These things work quite well, um, and don't be afraid to use them. Try to bandage it once with a pressure bandage. If that doesn't work, immediately go to a tourniquet. Long gone are the days where we try 15 different things and then call the hospital and get permission to put a tourniquet on, because by that time your patient's bled out and dead uh, and you're still on the phone with the doctor. So we try to bandage it once. If that doesn't work, we go right to the tourniquet. Okay? And then cover them up, treat them for shock, and get them to the hospital.